Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 7 Lesson 2 using tables to solve ratio problems. Now in the last lesson we, we used some tables to solve ratio problems, but remember a ratio is just sort of a, a comparison between two quantities that says, hey for every blank number of these things you have to have blank number of these things. Right? And it's, it's really simple. Like, like imagine taking a class trip, right? Where for every seven students that go on the trip, you need to have two adults. So, you know, if seven kids go, you know, you need two adults. But if 14 kids go, you need four adults. And if 21 kids go, you need six adults. So ratios, ratios are comparisons of two quantities that you can scale up or sometimes even down by using multiplication to go upwards and using division to go downwards. All right. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using tables quite a bit to try to help us solve problems that involve ratios. So let's get right into that. All right, here we go. Exercise number one. On a field trip, kids wore either a red shirt or a white shirt. The ratio of red shirts to white shirts is 5 to 3. There are 24 kids on the field trip. We want to determine how many of each color there were. Answer the following. All right, so before we even get into letter A, let, let's talk about this, right? The ratio of red shirts to white shirts is 5 to 3. Now make sure you really get that. That means if there were simply five kids that were wearing red shirts, right, then there would be three kids wearing white shirts. Now that can't be the scenario exactly because that would only be eight kids and we're told there are 24 kids on the field trip. All right, but this idea is that we can take this fundamental ratio of five kids wearing red to three kids wearing white and we can keep multiplying it up to get to the number of kids we need. So let's take a look at letter A. The tape diagram below represents this ratio visually. Add to the diagram until you have 24 total kids or shirts. All right. Now, kind of note, at this point, all we have are eight kids. All right. So imagine, you know, like kids are getting on the bus. Five kids get on the bus, they all have red shirts. Three kids on the bus, they all have white shirts. Right? Then maybe. What happens is another five kids get on the bus and they're wearing red shirts, but to keep that ratio of five to three, then we have to have three kids that come in that have white shirts. Now, once we have this group, right, we now have 10 reds and six whites, so we have 16 total students. All right, still not enough because we need 24. So now, if I go again and I have another five kids that come on with red shirts, right? That means three more would have to come on with white shirts, right? And now, since I've got eight, eight, and eight, I have a total of 24, right? Three times eight is 24. And that means, what do I have? I've got three times five. or 15 red shirts, and I have 3 times 3, or 9 white. So I literally took that ratio, 5 to 3, and I scaled it up with a scaling factor of 3, right? I multiplied both the 5 and the 3 by 3, giving me 15 red and 9 white. Now, with this kind of, you know, like tape diagram, and we're going to use tape diagrams a little bit more later on, it's simple enough, but, you know, it obviously could get really, really messy. All right. What helps a lot is the use of a table. So let's look at that a little bit more in letter B. If there were 40 kids on the trip instead of 24 kids, and the ratio of red shirts to white shirts stayed at 5 to 3, Fill in the table below to determine how many of each shirt there was. All right, so let's begin this together, right? And we can even see what we did up here in the table, right? So 0, 0, 0, if there's nobody coming, there's nobody coming. Then, right, so now I've got that fundamental ratio of 5, 3, and 8. If I doubled this ratio, right, I scaled it up by a factor of 2, I'd have 10, 6, and 16. That literally is represented on my picture here with these two groupings, right? 
Now, if I took this fundamental ratio of 5, 3, and 8, and I multiplied everything by 3, I'd have 15, 9, and 24. And of course, that was kind of the scenario in letter A. I had 24 total students. But I can also take this ratio and multiply each of those numbers by 4, giving me 20, 12, and 32, right? I still don't have enough because I'm looking for 40 kids to be on this trip. So now let's take the 5, the 3, and the 8 and multiply each by 5. So that's going to give me 25, 15, and 40, and that's my winner. I could go one more, right? If I went one more, I would be scaling all of these by 6, and I'd get 30, uh, 18, and 48, but they told me 40 kids go on the trip. So I'm, I'm, if you will, I'm done here, right? And I can now see that I've got 25 kids with red shirts and 15 kids with white shirts. All right, the table makes it very, very easy to keep track. And remember, every single line in the table takes that simplest ratio and simply multiplies it, right, by one additional number times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5, etc. Okay? So let's keep using tables to solve ratio problems. Here we go. Right? And, and again, this is exactly what we just saw in the last, the last problem. Right? Tables can be a great way to keep track of equivalent ratios and to find your final answer. You can think about them actually both using multiplication, which we were just talking about, but also using addition, right? You could literally say, all right, well, you know, I'm thinking about these kids kind of getting on the bus with their various colored shirts, you know, five kids get on, then I add another five, then I add another five, then I add another five, another five, another five. Here with the white shirts, I'd be adding three, adding three, adding three, adding three, adding three. Or I can think of every single column in my table, or if it was vertical, every single row in my table, as just doing simply something where I multiply, right, by a certain number. So, you know, perhaps to get to this column, I multiply everything by 4, right? So I take 8 and multiply it by 4, or I take 3 and multiply it by 4, or I take 5 and multiply it by 4, etc. So you can work tables either by doing kind of this addition process or by doing a multiplication process. And I would suggest the multiplication just because, in my opinion, it's easier. All right, let's keep going. Let's play around with a uh, vertical table here. Exercise number two. Ross has a jar with pennies and dimes in it. The ratio of pennies to dimes is three to one. If there are a total of 28 coins in the jar, how many more pennies are there than dimes? Use the table below to help. All right, so let's get you started off on this and then see if you can finish it yourself, right? The whole point of saying the ratio of pennies to dimes is three to one means that for every three pennies, there is one dime. So that's the way we can actually start, right? We can say, well, if there were three pennies, there would be one dime, and that means that there would be four total coins. Now, I want to keep track of my total primarily because the one thing I know besides the ratio is that I have 28 total coins. Now, I can go the next row down by either, you know, adding 3, adding 1, and adding 4, or just thinking about multiplying each one of these numbers by 2. So if I multiply each one of those numbers by 2, I'd get 6 pennies, 2 dimes, and 8 total coins. Right, let's do one more row together, right? Again, I could add three, add one, add four, or I could take that fundamental ratio and say, well, if I have three, one, and four, and I multiply now by three, right, I'd have a nine here, a three here, and a 12 here. All right, by doing this, hopefully, eventually, I will see in this final column, I'll see my 28 coins, and I can answer the question. Pause the video now and play around a little bit with this and see if you can come up with the answer. All right, well, let's keep going, right? So I did times two, right, times three. Let's do times four, right? So that's going to be 12, four, 16. Let's do times five. That's going to be 15, five, and 20. And let's do times six. And that's going to be 18, six, and 24. Oh, I'm getting close right, times seven, 
and that's going to be 21, 7, and 28. And there we have it, right? We're told we have 28 total towings, so the number of pennies we have is 21, the number of dimes we have is 7, and the question asks how many more pennies than dimes do we have? How many more? Well, that's easy. That's just 21 minus 7. So therefore, our final answer is 14. All right. And again, you can just imagine this. All, you know, it just means that Ross took out his jar, right? Threw these coins out there. There were 28 of them. And he can take three pennies and one dime and put them in a group. Another three pennies and one dime, put them in a group. Another three pennies, one dime, put them in a group. Right? That's what it means to have a ratio of three to one. Let's keep going. All right, exercise number three. A cafeteria has an unknown number of kids in it, some of whom are left-handed. The ratio of left-handed students to right-handed students is two to nine. Answer the following questions. Letter A, what is the ratio of left-handed students to all students? Fill in the following. For every blank students, blank of them are left-handed. Use a tape diagram. Justify using a tape diagram below. All right, I'd like you to pause this video now and think about both what the ratio of left-handed students to all students would be, fill in this blank, and then see if you can explain it using a tape diagram. Go for it. All right, well, I'm going to draw the tape diagram first, right? Because what do we know? We know that if we had a bunch of students, right, right, if I had two students that were left-handed, then I'd have nine that were right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine. Apparently those right-handed students are getting shorter as we go. Let me just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Great. Right? So th this is literally what that ratio is telling us. You know, right? There, there's two left-handed students, there are nine right-handed students. But how many total students are there? Well, in total, there are 11 students, at least in this ratio. And that means for every 11 students, two of them are left-handed. Right? So it's kind of interesting. Oftentimes ratios are comparing two parts of an overall group. But many times ratios are comparing a part of a group to the total group. And that's the, that 11 and 2 thing. Right? For every 11 students in this cafeteria, two of them are left-handed. So let's take a look at letter B now. If there are 45 right-handed students in the cafeteria, how many total students are there? Solve by setting up a horizontal table. All right, I'd like you to play around with this problem now by setting up your own table. Pause the video and take a few minutes. All right, let's play around. Um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to put here left, right, and total. And what do we know? We know for every two left-handed students, there are nine right-handed students and there are 11 total students. Easy enough. This is sort of our basic ratio, two to nine to 11, all right? But that surely there are probably more than 11 kids. In fact, we know that there are 45 right-handed students. So if I take this and I just kind of multiply by two, then I'll have four, 18, and 22. If I multiply by 3, we'll have 6, 27, and 33. If I multiply by 4, we'll have 8, 36, and 44. If I multiply by 5, we'll have 10, uh, 45, and 55. And that's actually enough, right? Because they tell me I have 45 right-handed students. And the question was, how many total students are there? Well, there must be 55. How easy the table makes it. Because it's very, very simple then to do that scaling. Ah, take that fundamental simplest ratio, just multiply by 2, multiply by 3, multiply by 4, multiply, multiply by 5. 
right? Literally, each column is a multiple of that first column. All right, let's play just a little bit longer. One more problem, here we go. Exercise number four. Joette and Ada are playing a card game where they score points. After one round, the ratio of Joette's points to Ada's points is four to seven. If Ada has 15 points more than Joette, then find out how many points Joette has. Use a table to find your answer. All right, so what I'd like you to do now is just do this all from scratch. Construct your own table, think about how to best lay it out, and see if you can figure out how many points that Joette has. All right, let's do it. So I really kind of want, for myself, I want a table that has three lines to it. I don't always want that. Sometimes I only want a table with two lines, but here I want, I want a table with three, all right? So I think I'll put Joette in first with a, a funny looking J there that doesn't look like a J at all. There we go. Then I think I'll, we'll put down Ada. And then we're gonna, we're gonna also have the fact that Ada has 15 points more, right? So um, maybe I'll put more down. Maybe that's not the best way to put it, but I think it's fine. All right, so now let's start filling in some ratio, right? The ratio, after one round, the ratio of Joette's points to Ada's points is four to seven, all right? So if Joette has four points, then Ada has seven points, right? Now what that means, of course, is that Ada has three points more than Joette. So all we're doing here is taking Ada's points and subtracting Joette's points. But it says that Ada has 15 points more than Joette. Here, she's only got three. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna scale this ratio and multiply everything here by two. That would be eight points for Joette, it'd be 14 points for Ada, and now Ada would have six points more than Joette. Now, by the way, you can see that six by either doing 14 minus eight or by literally just taking the three and scaling it by multiplying by two. Still not right because we're looking for 15 points more. So now let's scale and multiply both ratios by three. So that's gonna be 12 points for Joette, 21 points for Ada, and nine points more for Ada than Joette. Still not enough. So let's scale by four. Right, Joette would have 16 points, Ada would have 28 points, and Ada would then have 12 points more than Joette. We're getting there. But Ada has to have 15 points more. So Joette, right, if we scale by a factor of five, would have 20 points, Ada would have 35 points, and Ada would have 15 points more. What are we actually trying to answer? How many points Joette has? So the answer is 20. And we don't have to go any further in this table, right? But again, systematically taking that simplest ratio, four to seven, and just continually scaling it up in this table until we find the answer that we want. All right, we're gonna look at some ways to kind of shortcut this in future lessons. But for now, tables, right? Good way to visualize ratios and especially equivalent ratios. All right, so a ratio, again, just compares how many of one thing we have versus another, right? Those ratios can be multiplied by whole numbers or even fractions to scale them up or to scale them down, right? Most of what we did today was scaling a ratio up. A ratio sort of in its simplest form was then scaled up to you know, get us the right answers. We used tables to keep track of that scaling throughout the lesson and you're gonna get a lot of practice on that on the homework. I just wanna thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 6 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.